Did you know that the Quran confirms over and over again that Jesus is divine? But modern Muslim scholars claim that Jesus is not divine? We'll expose how they are contradicting their own Quran. Today, uh, we are going to talk about the divinity of Jesus Christ in the Quran. And yes, you've heard me correct. The Quran actually does provide proofs of the divinity of Christ, uh, despite what our Muslim friends might think uh, or might argue uh, basically against that. We're using the word of their God who has generously proved that Jesus is a divine person. And of course, with me here to unpack this for us, this shocking, uh, basically, uh, uh, you know, reality uh, is no other than our dear brother, Rob Christian. Rob, thank you so much as always, brother. Thank you, dear brother, for inviting me again on your amazing, amazing uh, uh, videos. Uh, God bless your team. God bless you. May our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ keep you a, a very long and healthy life because we have a lot of work to do. Thank you. In the future, please, Lord, keep our brother here healthy and safe. All right, um, this topic, Jesus in Islam is God. And we're going to prove that from your books, Muslims. All right, don't shoot the messenger. We are only reading. I'm going to show you what your books are saying. So please don't hate me. If you don't agree with me, I advise you to burn your books or at least think. If you care about the truth, think drop Islam, drop Muhammad, and come back home to the real living God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Glory to his name. Let us see what your Islamic books are saying, my friends. In the hadith, in the hadith, Muhammad, in multiple hadith, we can find that Muhammad says that Jesus is sinless. What does that mean? Jesus is sinless. How can a man who is in the flesh not commit sins and be called only a mere human. And to confirm that, let us go to the Quran. In the Quran, in the following chapter, chapter 9, Surah at tawbah one of the last chapters, and many Muslim scholars actually think that this is the final chapter, but let's assume that it's one of the last chapters of the Quran. We see in the Arabic, and I want to, uh, uh, I want to read with Brother Al-Fadi, it says, اتخذوا احبارهم ورهبانهم اربابا من دون الله والمسيح ابن مريم meaning they the Jews and the Christians have taken their monks and rabbis or their rabbis and monks meaning the Jews and the Christians as gods as lords and the word is ارباب ارباب plural of رب ارباب as gods besides Allah wa Al Masih. Wait a second. So, what is the ayah? What is Allah basically trying to say? Because Muslims say this is the speech of Allah. Allah is trying to say, You Jews and Christians, the Jews and the Christians have taken their rabbis and their monks as gods. No, no, the real gods are Allah and the Messiah, Al Masih, the son of Maryam. And we continue reading, and it says, They were not commanded except to worship only one God. So what is Allah trying to say? That he, Allah, and the Messiah, they are gods, but together they are one God. So here the Tawheed is, is becoming crystal clear. So this is why Tawheed means unification, right? Tawheed, ana awahid, I unified Tawheed, the unification of multiple gods to become one God. Do you see it, brother? Can yes. you confirm as an Arabic speaker? Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, I don't know why Allah wouldn't say اتخذوا أحبارهم ورهبانهم والمسيح أرباب من دون الله. I mean, was it that difficult for him to say? Here you go. I just solved the, the problem for him, if that was his exactly. intent. Exactly. So you see here, even the, the, the Arabic grammar, the wording makes it clear that uh, Jesus is not among the monks and the, and the rabbis. No, he is he's placed after Allah, meaning Allah wa and the Messiah are the gods, right. right? Else, as the brother already confirmed and he already uh, uh, explained it, he should have placed Isa, who they call Jesus, 
uh, among the uh, rabbis and the monks. Then it would have made sense that Jesus is not God. But here, as we are reading it in the Arabic, in the Quran, not the false translations, this is a uh, translation that I have created for the people to make it, to see the problem, to see the shirk, because we see that Allah and the Messiah are the gods and together they are one God. You see it, my friends? That's proof number one. Let us continue, my friends. Proof number two is the following. Surat Az-Zukhruf, brother Al-Fari. This is the next chapter that I want to bring. And specifically, Ayah 61. Chapter 43 of the Quran, Ayah 61. Look what it says. وَإِنَّهُ لَعِلْمٌ لَعِلْمٌ or لِسَّاعَةِ لِسَّاعَةِ Meaning, in context, if you go to, let's say, Tafsir, Ibn Kathir, for example, we see it's talking about the Islamic Jesus, Isa. And if we read it correctly, not a false translation done by Muslim scholars, because remember, they always lie in their translations. It says, وَإِنَّهُ meaning he, and most surely he, Jesus, has knowledge of the last hour of wait, the wait, hour. Wait, 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 wait. Are you saying the Quran claims that Jesus knows the last hours and our Muslim friends come and babble all the time that Jesus doesn't know the last hour? Exactly. So Muslims, you are shooting yourself in the foot. You are calling Allah a liar. You are calling your prophet a liar who confirmed in the Quran that Jesus has the knowledge of the last hour. But here we have a crystal clear Contradiction. If Jesus is not God, he is not equally divine with like Allah. That means we have a contradiction because Allah in another chapter, in another ayah, he says that only he has the knowledge, the ilm of the hour. And brother, many Muslim scholars and translators, they lie. They say that la uh, ilm means a sign. No, ilm Alam, the word alam means knowledge. So they lie course, in their translations, right? And and, and not say, only that, but he's also yeah. a sign. He's, he has the knowledge and he's also a sign in another verse yes. talks about that, that he's the sign for the end times as well. Yes, but he's not only a sign. He he has the he knowledge. He knows it. Knows when. He knows the hour. He knows almul ghayb, brother. The knowledge of the, of the unseen. So what does that say? If Allah in other chapters... In another ayah, it says that Allah, only Allah knows the knowledge of the last hour, the unseen. Clearly here, Jesus has the knowledge of the hour. And in another chapter, brother, another ayah, it says that even Jesus knows what people eat in their houses. That's so right. So he has the knowledge of the unseen. Did so you catch he it, is my friends? omniscient, omnipresent, omniscient. Omnipresent. That's what we call divine attributes. And this is why my Muslim friends, don't worry about these whitewashed, you know, Muslim scholars who are babblers and trying to lead you to uh, basically away from heaven. Come to Jesus. He's the one that will lead you to heaven. Even the Quran acknowledge his divine abilities. Exactly, brother. And to make it more clear, to add more flavor on top. To put the cherry on top of the of the of the of the cake. Look, in Surah Al Ankabut, meaning the spider of the Quran, chapter twenty nine, ayah forty six, it becomes even more clear. It says, "And O Muslims, O Muslims, in context, do not argue with the people given the books, meaning the Jews and the Christians." And I want people to stay focused at all times because it makes more clear. It makes more sense why the Quran says that Jesus is equally divine with Allah. Look, so Muslims don't don't uh, disrespect uh, the Jews and the Christians. Try to be uh, 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 to be to be humble with them, and say to them in, in the following parts of the ayah: We Muslims believe in what has been sent down towards us, meaning the Quran, the, the divine revelation, the Quran, and again confirming the Bible. Confirming the Torah and Injil, yet they claim that the Torah and Injil are corrupted. It's, it's amazing math, my friend. Look what it says here. And what has been sent down towards you, meaning the Torah and Injil, you, <laughs> the Muslims be, must believe in the Torah. They must believe in the Injil. And, and here is the most important part. And the Arabic says, Wa ilahana, meaning Allah, our God Allah, wa ilahakum, O Jews and Christians, wahid. And ours, meaning Allah, and your God, Jesus, is one. Now, do you see how chapter 9 
Ayah 31, back to back with chapter 29, Ayah 46, becomes crystal clear why Jesus is divine in the Quran. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And ours, Allah, the Muslims must say to the Christians, and your God, Jesus, is one. Muslims, please wake up. Why are you not worshiping Jesus? Why are you attacking the divinity of Jesus? While well, your Quran over and over makes it crystal clear that Jesus has the knowledge of the final hour. He is equally divine with Allah. He is called a God. And on top of that, he is one together with Allah. Please wake up, leave Islam and come back home. You must worship according to the Quran. You must worship Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Hallelujah, brother. Amen to that. Thank you so much as always. And this is just a glimpse of many other things. For instance, you know, we didn't get into the fact that he's called the word of Allah. We didn't get into the fact that he's called the spirit of Allah. You can argue however you want about that. It's very clear. He is sharing in the same substance and nature of who Allah is. And that makes him divine, my friends. So come to Jesus. The Quran tells you that he is divine and he knows the hour and he is a sign for the end times. He knows the future. He's also a creator. He did create things according to the Quran. So why are you denying Jesus? Why do you not want to follow him when your own book tells you that he is worthy of that? So come to Jesus. He will lead you to heaven and give you eternal life. Thank you, brother. Thank you, everyone. This is Al Fadi, over and out. God bless. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel, Sierra International, and click on the bell so that you receive notifications whenever we publish a new video or go live. I would also like to appeal to you to consider becoming a Patreon patron by clicking the link right below. By doing so, you can give towards the production of these videos. There are also other options for you where you can give to our channel. I thank you from the bottom of my heart.